green vibration, everyone. Let's go please together. <laughs> Mm. Mm, or wh whoever comes might not be the same. That's all right. And we are here yet again. Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I feel like I, nice the uh, and Miller, that I see, seen you somewhere or feel you. That is correct. And <laughs> Sarah, yes. you are connected to us through your tiger energy. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> May I ask who's speaking or which being is speaking, I guess? I am uh, Sayer. Nasta here? Yes. Oh, welcome. Are you also a tiger being? I, you could say, have tiger-like features. That's why I've chosen this. Oh, very good. Is there uh, are you a male or female? I am male and my personality is more than a bear. Even my statue looks more like a bear. My facial features resemble a tiger. Oh. So are you a bit in between in that sort of energy or do you feel closer to the bear or closer to the tiger energy? Just feel my energy and with that what you feel when you are connecting to me now. Connect to your tiger if you wish. And he will follow you and my presence as well. You may see the tiger as a hole in space, in air. As a little part of a different dimension, bubble of energy, or you can as well see me as the tiger following you. I was told um, the day before that there were two tigers, a male and a female. Yes, there is the female side 
female counterpart to me connected to you in this way. Is there anything she would like to impart to me? Tell me. Yes. The tiger should simply represent to you female energy, feline, if you would like to perceive it as such. Caring energy, one that resembles onion to you are protected nothing can endanger you you are in the heart of the onion and there are layers of energy of beings that assist you are there for you we are just one of those it doesn't matter how you imagine our energy to be represented in your understanding and your perception only matters that you know that we are there for you as well thank you very nice Nasir, are you from this planet? No. I, May I ask where you're from? I come from third planet of star Betelgeuse. Ah. We are Orion constellation. Have I met you before? Yes. Uh, was there a question? I can feel the energy. It's very. Um, I know. I know the energy. Where Where did we meet? You had past life on our planet. It's very respected member of community. Highest vibrational semi physicalized beings as I am. Are you more like a heart based uh, beings? Yes, very much so. 
Yes. So you have um, different ranks, or how do I say it? You said I was like respectful member of your society. What does that mean? You help us understand that we can access lower dimensional beings in our planet with our telepathic communication. As you are learning right now, you are communicating telepathically with your animals. And you Earth connection to horses, horse that is your, let's say, spirit. A horse? Yes. Yes. They are beautiful, Magnific magnificent beings. Yeah. Imagine female horse beside you whenever you wish to remind yourself that we are around we as benevolent extraterrestrial beings to assist you, to be there for you. So when you say you assist me, what does that mean in my 3D world? You are not 3D being. Your your fourth density now, and you can communicate with us. We we can. On the lowest level of vibration, at least give you signs that will lead you, that will remind you of who you are. And with that reminder, you can simply raise your vibration to perceive more of what we communicate to you. Yeah, right now my heart opens. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. The energy is very beautiful. Thank you. <coughs> we, although talk similar we are different beings I am not the same that connected to you yesterday We mm -hmm. transcend it. What does that mean? Does not have the physical appearance in this timeline that we share now. And you do? 
Yes. You want to know how I look like? Yes, of course. With the tiger face, bear like statue, and sitting to your appearance. And um, I'm on the rock uh, that is alive, it's just moving very slowly. Um, above our clouds, I have green eyes that look like oyster eyes I have from back uh, I look like what kids draw sun as sun May I ask the question? Yes. I have come to realize recently that I am connected to the whole constellation of the old lions. Can you please tell me any information to why I feel connected to that constellation so deeply? Yes, Orion's, Orion's were Tyrannosaurus Rexes of this section of the universe. Very proud and powerful. Most star systems in Orion constellation were here invaded or simply taken by very strong beings that as we read your collective consciousness Orion's represent to you we are all though from Orion as well simply we are not invited because our planet is let's say hostile to those beings and you have many lifetimes as one of those and they are not what they have been in this moment Bayes all close to you are in the understanding their 
connectedness and uh, nature some of them <clears throat> some of reptiles to her of simply do not wish to ascend to understand their oneness so they just go to the beginning of the cycle everyone in this free will universe is allowed to do that are we doing that let's say on a very minute level uh, yes but not as a humanity you are already on the top of the wave of ascension there is no really stopping it for you or going back but in minute level what we mean by that is you simply repeat cycles of what you do not prefer to do simply repeat cycles of not understanding yourself on purpose sometimes you are high in vibration and you know who you are and you choose to go back to as you say your 3D life but there is no really going back you I now understand and accept that and simply go with the flow yes Thank you. Sarah, you had a question? Yes, are all the entities in, on your planet uh, animal spirit beings as we would think of them to be? Yes, if you come to our planet, you would well not in uh, your body in astral. You would recognize animal like looking beings everywhere around you because we have faces look like animal faces and um, the entity that came to us at one point who was um, like a uh, a sort of bird spirit being was that being also from the same planet no 
Thank you. There are very few flying animals on our planet. Uh, there is one that looks a bit like that. His wings are M shaped though. When you see it flying, it looks like M letter. And one you have heard of before, you could say is a pterodactyl person. It has a long neck and a dragon like face. And the neck looks like snake when you said um, I was uh, in uh, incarnated in your planet planet how do you see that how we, do you know that? we see your connections now that you create with your vibration that you put out and we see that you have resonant connections in our past that's why we call it past lives but I am not seeing it directly i am not overseeing all times i'm just seeing what let's say my guide presents to me of you i see so if i change my vibration um, then there will not be past lives in your society. Yes, we should call it parallel lives just yes. for clear understanding. Yes. Have you had um <laughs> parallel lives in the, uh, our world yes we are aware that all the universe is one sentient being and I can connect to existences that resemble my personality on your world I see so who do you resemble on our world? Well, sim I am there for each of you as different person. And mostly I represent the power animal of yours. For Rantishek, I'm dear. 
Amazing. Can you speak of all of us? Hold on. Uh, before you say anything, there is a, a person that cannot speak right now, but she does want to uh, ask a question, and I feel as if the question is going to be simply answered. And the question is, is there panthers on your planet? Panther-like looking creatures, yes. But we do not have any commonalities in uh, how our body function to your bodies. Our world is just allows us to uh, evolve very, very strong, uh, very strong bodies compared to you. If we would come to your world, some of us would be able to jump from continent to continent. <laughs> Very nice. In physical form? Yes. Wow. Holy stars. <laughs> <laughs> Would there be a loud punk on the ground when you land it? Or would there just be a hole <laughs> playing it? Yeah, it's the impact with probably somewhat damage the surface. Wow. <laughs> and to you, good day, guys. How are you all? No, I am. Nice to meet you once Hello. again. In this time, Frantishek is channeling at the moment. I will oh, let Frantishek disconnect. It's right Nasir. Now. Enough. Has Where is he? Set for now. Thank you. <coughs> I actually brought today an interesting <coughs> topic to discuss, from which one of us can learn a lot. Ivan, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. Oh, we disconnected. Oh my goodness. Oh. What was this? Okay, all of that is happening right now is for the reason, and I will reveal this reason for you before you at this time. I was oh. discussing several minutes ago with my friend the idea of usage of chakras, because even in our channeling human colonies webinar some of us use this permission slip some of us does not use this permission slip and i'm talking about myself and roxanne and in both cases we can operate quite efficiently what i mean is that yes i can channel but i never never ever feel chakras they are not defined in my reality this does not stop me in any way, shape or form. And other people do have chakras and they find this idea very efficient, so on and so forth. So the question is, if we are willing as a collective to synchronize on one specific idea, the question is whether we will define chakras as part of our reality definition or we will not. How do you think, how do you feel? I don't think it matters. Everyone will perceive things in many different ways. Well, of course, this is so. But what I mean is that we can amplify 
our preferred reality by sharing our beliefs and maybe collectively deciding what will work for us best. But then what? we cut off we things that also work for us time. best. Hmm? It does, but but by I'm choosing only one way, we cut off. Offering. I'm just putting out offerings so you could really synchronize with your own higher mind and understand whether this idea is something you prefer or whether you don't. No, because I may channel one way one day and then channel in another day another another way another day. So to to say well, it only has to be this way and this way alone, that makes no sense to me. What I'm saying is, where are you willing to focus your consciousness? In which... I didn't hear your question, you paused. I'm saying this is related to the idea of choosing your focus of consciousness, in which specific way you want to focus your consciousness, because as we understand mostly that our intention and our attention is what creates our reality. Mm, I don't think it's necessary for me. All right, then, but maybe it's necessary for someone else. That This is why I was inspired when I came here. In this conversation today, Caitlin says it's your choice. For the reason, Caitlin says it's your choice. She can't speak at the moment, but her response is it's your choice. And understand, of course. Well, our, my, sure. I guess my question would be: Are chakras real because we make them real? Are they just a permission slip because we have agreed that they are a real permission slip? Which, which, which by that definition we could then dismiss as a permission slip and no longer necessary or do they truly exist as a law well, if you will well, they that we agreed upon from my perspective there are actually permissions because for example when I interact with the people who are submerged into the idea of chakras, so on and so forth, after some time of aligning with their perspectives, their ideas, so I could relate to them, I start to feel chakras perhaps in some similar way as they do. But when I'm on my own wave, I actually don't feel myself as being, let's say, focused even in my head. I just this entire body for me is like, in a sense, a robot that exists within my consciousness. So. I don't care about chakras, I don't feel them, I'm not focused on them, and I don't see... Well, typically, typically I never was um, until I, I guess, became the idea that maybe perhaps I should be, and that would enhance my telepathic abilities as well as channeling abilities. However, with that said, I never really used it necessarily as a requirement for that, therefore it never was a requirement for me. However, I find it intriguing that you bring up the question and this idea because I was wondering this very thing myself is, is it absolutely necessary for me to practice this idea in order for me to accelerate in my awareness? And perhaps the question, perhaps the answer for all of us is precisely that, whether or not we choose to mm -hmm. focus on that or not, not necessarily relinquishing it as a universal idea one way or the other. I have a thought. Before, like she said, the chakra system idea did not intrigue me as much. And when I started this whole process this year alone, um, then I started feeling chakras turning, even though I didn't really pay attention to it. So whether or not we say this is the way it has to be or this, um, whatever is necessary for our bodies will happen whether we're focusing attention on it or not. And so... The point is, the chakra system exists, yes, whether we believe in it or not, 
and whatever our body requires, that's basically um, what will happen for it. I tend to automatically be drawn to what it is I feel that my exactly my physical yes apparatus requires. So therefore, if in someone's idea someone said, "Gee, I feel like I need some grounding and I need to go ground my red chakra," you know, um, I don't necessarily think of it necessarily that way. My body automatic, I instinctively will feel the need to go sit on the ground. Period. And so it's almost as if my body instinctively says, you need balance, or you need grounding, or you need water energy, or you need to look at the sky, or what have you. I feel automatically drawn to it for some reason. Exactly. As if, it's, as if it's almost like a food craving. As if like today, as if today my body chemically says you need oranges. Um, um, so it's, it's so for me it's almost an instinctive like thing. Like today my body says you need to be you know sit on the grass or you need to walk on you know do this or you need to be or here in the water or um, so forth. So. I wonder if it's more an, of an individual energetic need on a moment by moment basis. All right. Caitlin has um, an answer for you. This is her perspective. She says, uh, then if you don't focus on it, it isn't part of your reality. Sometimes there is there are opportunities to choose that path, though. That's why sometimes things, shock-related things, pop out at you. It's kind of like the universe is offering you an opportunity to study of, ha of having that in your reality if you choose. It doesn't have to be necessary because it's your free will and overall choice. Oh, thank you. This is related to the idea of what I'm getting for myself a moment ago, what perspective that I have, of course. Chakra, chakras is a good tool or permission to sleep for those who train to, or used to operate in a kind of frequency that is aligned with this idea. And there is a lot of support within that idea. But for me, feel that for me it's not necessary to include that idea in my vibration and go along with that idea. I feel that I can let go of that idea because for me, my entire body is a channel in a sense because for those people who are, let's say, aligned with the idea of chakra and obsessed with the idea of channeling, they perceive that their head at some point is becoming larger, that energy is flowing through their head. And this is happens because this is what beliefs, their belief systems tells them how it's supposed to operate. For me, it's like I don't have experience any growth of my head on any other part of my body because I'm experiencing that my body is a part of a channeling process itself. So right. for those um, of you who are using this permission slip, it's question to you. Are you do you feel like maybe I should let that idea go and see what unknown presents for me as a broader perspective of myself? That, that is a choice you can make for yourself. However, the discussion we had about chakras the other day was not um, channeling chakras through your body while you're channeling, meaning while an entity is speaking. It was more of um, like a clearing, like an opening, something like that. Uh, exactly. Prior to channeling or prior to channeling, channeling, not while you're channeling, because in that stage you're not really thinking about too much except for the yeah. energy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm trying to do it at that point is I don't However, know. However I have to, it's it's a bit strange. I would have to think though that because you're introducing the question and the idea to the group as a, a new possibility as an idea of a new possibility for yourself as an experience, perhaps that in itself is your answer. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I have my answer already, but I introduce that idea to the group to, let's say, empower the group mm -hmm. to go and dive deeper into unknown to see how reality can unfold mm -hmm. for us if we stop holding on to old ideas and yes. questions. Mm -hmm as part of the ascension process and plus we are in come aligned with this idea which is cool so we will have more inspiration more energy so on and so forth i believe it boils you should. Down. i think it boils down to intent yeah i think it just boils down to intent because you know this morning i was feeling a little my energy was feeling a little odd and i was kind of questioning some of the things that i some of the message i was receiving and trying to make sense of some of the puzzle pieces and I was I was sort of drawn to the idea of you know of kind of a ritual uh, salt bath kind of thing and so I was reminded to do that and so I did that and with that intention was a physical intention of releasing and you know actually you know releasing any physical and mental beliefs and you know, washing them away. So perhaps it is just simply intent that in the clearing of the chakras or the opening of these what we would call points is just a, simply a matter of intent and nothing more. Um, and, and has the associated colors along with it to allow for that uh, by that the raising of that vibration. Yes. Caitlin has an, an idea. Um, she wanted to continue. Of course. She says, sometimes when you believe in something very strongly, it can manifest. So for those who do believe in the whole chakra thing, are very aware and sensitive of their chakras, yeah. it, it's as if it, magn it amplifies the energy, you know. Okay. So for That's those that let's say, who don't believe or don't want that in their reality, she notices that they don't feel those chakras or are sensitive to it, maybe because they don't choose to feel or focus. Well, thank you for this perspective. For some, perhaps it will be of a great assistance, but for mostly it's a kind of obvious perspective. And because of that perspective, this issue was brought forward today whether we are being focused on that idea or whether we're not, but my excitement doesn't lead me in the, into that direction. Mm. It leads me into letting go of that idea and to feel the energy of excitement itself because this energy onto itself awakens me into my higher consciousness. And actually, a, a nice suggestion for all of you, find yourself in a depressed, negative state when you don't see a way out. If you at that moment, just honestly state to yours and what your belief systems are at that moment. That action alone will align you at that moment with who you really are. And it's really that easy. So you're actually never disconnected with your higher mind. You're choosing to be disconnected, but you are not. I'd like to mention something, right? Well, the proceed. conversation we had on chakras the other day was because your intent was to speak to your Russian people. Hmm? I you noticed there was a difference between this energy you are showing us at the moment and the energy you showed us when others were around. Well, yes. They were entirely different. And you were asking That's... about the chakras for balance. That was the intent of the conversation, to provide you an idea of how you can attain balance. Well, thank you for your perspective.
yes. Yeah, in actual fact, when I'm connected with those two people, I feel, in a sense, more of myself. Like the excitement energy is more powerful, and I represent myself a different state of consciousness, a different energy for a collective. So, yeah, mm -hmm. different frequencies, different ideas. Cool. Mm -hmm. But they're sleeping now, so this is why they're not presently here. I understand. Okay. <sighs> of them actually don't use the definition of chakras in their reality. Only excitement. Uh, Beautiful. Don't have to make it complicated. Make it simple. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and seven chakra system is quite, in a sense, a complicated to use because it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, not one. <laughs> I mean, you could think of it as just one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's seven. One in the all in the all in the one. Yes. <laughs> and but that way you will you. attain true balance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true, true. So, I stopped Frangitex from speaking. I'm sorry, Frangitex. I haven't noticed the channel link in it sense or the importance of your message so what he was speaking about something interesting yes it was interesting 